Never before had he seen such a brutal serial killer, who had no sense of humanity or human decency, and who killed randomly and indiscriminately. He enjoyed the thrill of killing, whether middle-aged, young, old or schoolchildren. He is so psychologically deviant that he has no sense of consciousness, but rather pleasure, and helps the police organize the order of his victim's deaths. He liked to kill at night, when, with little light and in the dark, he could watch his victims struggling with pain and screaming in despair. He felt he was creating a beautiful work of art, and he got more and more excited. Not only that, he even dared to mess with the most powerful gangster in Korea and stab him when he was off guard. Dong Su, the leader of the gang, was beating a man to a bloody pulp. Before he left, he asked his men to throw him away. The other gang leader had done something untoward. Dong Su then went to Sang Du's place to settle the matter nicely. Sang Du threw a bowl of soup at Dong Su's men, out of disrespect. Dong Su then called him out and beat him up. Then he grabbed the men's hair and pulled out two teeth with his hands, and put them in a glass of drink and told Sang Du to drink it. Seeing that Dong Su was a terrible person, Sang Du obediently drank the drink. After that, he decided to go home alone, and asked his men to leave. And while he was driving, he was suddenly hit by a car. Instead of getting angry, Dong Su forgave the other man, but this man didn't leave, instead taking out a knife and stabbing Dong Su. Dong Su struggled to fight back and avoided every stab even giving resistance and was able to injure the man as well. The man was injured so he decided to run away and hit Dong Su at the same time. When Dong Su woke up, he told his men that the man who attacked him was not a gangster or a member of Sang Du, but as a gang leader stabbed at night, he had lost his reputation. His gang business had fallen into disrepute. His investors' money was slow to come in, and his rival, Sang Du, always coveted his money and also his territory. Taking advantage of that situation, Dong Su was furious and promised to find the culprit and kill him. On the other hand, a detective, T. Suk, was recently put in charge of a serial murder case, but ran into obstacles, such as the lack of communication between the police chiefs, and the fact that the killer left no useful clues at the crime scene. Fingerprints, the murder weapon and the lack of progress in the serial murder case are never sorted out. When he learned that Dong Su had been stabbed, he went to his house to find out what had happened. He suspected that Dong Su's attackers might be serial killers, that they acted randomly at night, and that they had done it the same way. In each case, the victim had been stabbed more than 10 times, and Dong Su was the only survivor in all cases. Ki Suk asked Dong Su to cooperate with him to find the killer, and Dong Su agreed to share information and intelligence. In this way, their friendship blossoms between two men who were once incompatible with each other. However, although on the surface they should help each other in this case, in reality they both have their own agendas in private. Dong Su wants to use police forensic technology to find the killer faster, and then torture the killer to death. And the police officer wants to use the power of the gang in numbers to do the dirty work and to find the killer as soon as possible. Their only cooperation agreement was to share resources and manpower, but not prisoner. And whoever found the killer first would handle the killer. He also gave the license plate of the car and asked his men to look for the killer. T. Suk also found marks on the bumper of Dong Su's car, which just like the previous case, had marks of being hit by a white painted car. This was the same killer no doubt, and even their efforts to investigate did not stop this killer from continuing his work, killing two more truck drivers. But both sides have their own agendas, each setting up traps to catch the killer. Today, T. Suk came to Dong Su's house angry and walked up to him and punched him in the face. Dong Su, who is also trained, beat up T. Suk and threw him on the table. T. Suk got up and tried to fight Dong Su again but Dong Su was too strong and punched him again. It turns out that Dong Su had arranged for his men to kill Sang Du with the killer's knife. The police found blood from a previously murdered victim on the knife to use as evidence. And for the sake of this case, T. Suk chose to keep quiet. The news of Sang Du's murder was widely reported in the media and discussed in the streets. The serial killer saw the news too and knew he had killed several people but not Sang Du. At Sang Du's funeral, the killer disguised himself as one of Sang Du's men, went to the scene and handed a note to Sang Du's assistant, saying that someone had used his knife to kill Sang Du, and immediately understood the meaning. So, the assistant took his men, armed with baseball bats and knives, and rushed into the warehouse where Dong Su was and started attacking him. At this point, Dong Su and T Suk, who were looking for evidence, had no choice but to fight back. Dong Su had to fight with his bare hands, and that was enough for him to fight against lowlifes like them. T Suk fought with all his might to survive, but throughout the warehouse, he was fighting with Sang Du's men, and Dong Su and T Suk almost punched each other. At that moment, Sang Du's assistant comes at Dong Su with a knife in his hand. Dong Su manages to dodge 
Then T Suk tries to help Dong Su, only to have Sang Du's assistant killed. T Suk panics and tries to save him. But Dong Su tells him to leave and he'll take care of it. Shortly after, a mother reported a tenant who had rented her house and not returned for three months. So she cooperates with the police and goes to the place where the killer has arranged to meet him. But because the owner of the house is too nervous, the killer runs away when he sees T Suk in ambush. T Suk and his colleagues ran after the killer. But they couldn't even see him in the streets or alleys, so they gave up. T Suk also found the killer's room and found a photo of the killer and his family. In the underground garage, four men stood in a row and started ordering to search for the whereabouts of the killer. They were broken into small groups to search for the hiding killer. And while they were waiting for the killer on a street, a white car slowly advanced, driven by the killer. The killer felt that he was being watched and stepped on the accelerator. T Suk and Dong Su started the car and followed him. By the time they looked inside the car, the killer had already fled. Dong Su's assistant was the first to chase the killer and was stabbed by him. By the time Dong Su arrives, his dying assistant shows him where the killer went. Dong Su follows him to a karaoke and sees two girls singing and crying. Dong Su came to his senses and then broke down the bathroom door. Beat up the killer, after paralyzing the killer, Dong Su went into a warehouse and tortured the killer. Just as Dong Su was about to slash his throat, T Suk drove his car and knocked Dong Su unconscious. T Suk got out of his car and brought the dying killer to court. But the court could not convict the killer because there was no strong evidence. Although the lawyer showed the killer weapon and pointed it at the killer, the killer admitted that the weapon was his own, but that didn't mean that he had killed anyone. As the trial comes to a halt, Dong Su enters. It turns out that T Suk has found him and wants him to testify in court. Since T Suk has a recording of Dong Su confessing to killing Sang Du, Dong Su appears in court and swears that everything he said is the truth. Dong Su takes off his clothes. There are stab wounds on his body. And there is evidence that Dong Su once stabbed the killer in the left chest. And everything Dong Su said was proven to be true and therefore the killer was sentenced to death. And also placed in the same cell as Dong Su, where Dong Su would kill the killer. If you like this video don't forget to subscribe, because by subscribing you have supported me to make better videos. What movie do you want next? Just comment below. Have a nice day.